to another episode of 507 Garage. It's been a while since I made a video, uh, just a lot going on recently. Um, so I've taken kind of a break from making videos, but I'm trying to get back to it. Um, but just to kind of get started on a lot of things, one of the main points or areas that I'm trying to work on is getting the wagon all wheel drive um, GS going. Um, so for that one, I've received parts. They're taking a while to actually arrive. And in the process of doing that, I'm also searching for other items that I want to use to incorporate for the wagon idea of the GS. So um, there's sort of several different cars uh, that I'm looking at, Mercedes, BMWs, uh, in regards of their hatch. So I can in, use their hatch, cut up part of the hatch, and then incorporate it to the trunk of the GS. The goal is that when you look at the GS, the wagon once it's completed and you look at it in the back, you want still to have it look like a GS. Only The only thing that you're gonna want people to really maybe notice is that it maybe has a hatch, but my goal is that as they look at it from the back, they can't tell, they actually have to walk up as close as possible to it to notice that it's a wagon. So I'll show you some examples uh, in regards to what I mean here. Let me just get through here. All right, it was just too windy with the garage doors open. But as you look at the GS, if you look at the back door, you would say up until like this section right here is where you would almost take up to where the roof is in window. And from the point back is where you would then cut, cut up the car to make the hatch piece or at least to straighten the, the, the flow of the, of the roof. So it moves back not so on a slanted motion as you see, but more straight and as it gets closer to the hatch, it just stays straight. So if you look at most hatch or not hatch, but wagon cars, the roof stays pretty straight um, and then the, the, the hatch of the wagon is there. So that's one of the reasons I have a couple donor cars. That way I can take what I need from either of them and incorporate it. The other area that is gonna be really tricky is the, the glass, but that's just something that I would have to go and take it to like a glass shop. But if you look at the back of a GS, as everybody's familiar with what the back of a GS looks like and my garage is dirty, I wanna keep that piece of the trunk. So this piece of the trunk here, I wanna keep this bottom piece. This piece is gonna be cut off from the trunk. And then the hatch that I'm planning on using the bottom piece of that hatch is gonna be cut off. So all you have is the top piece of the hatch and the bottom piece of the hatch, and those will be attached here, welded, and then you would then have the hatch come in. You would have to then have the roof line straight more, so then you can create a bracket so the hatch can actually be attached to it. So that's gonna be part of, of what I will be doing. Now, this blue GS, the goal for this one is different than the wagon. So this wide body GS is gonna be used for a different purpose, has completely different build idea behind it. The ones that are outside, the ones I showed you, the gray one is the one that I'll be using. I have a gray one, there's a black one, there's another one I'm thinking of getting just to have enough for basically cutting things up and having one at the end. I've always loved wagons. I like big body cars. So wagon is just kind of another example of a big body vehicle. Um, that I'll be able to enjoy. And due to the race car being a race car, the GS Time Attack car being a, a, a race car, I can't necessarily drive that on the regular on the street. So that's why I wanted to build something that I could drive on the street. Um, and I ran into a Altesa Gita, which is the all wheel drive version of um, an Altesa or a wagon uh, of the, the version of the, of the I think it's called a, a IS300 Sports Cross. Um, if you're familiar with um, with Martin, he had one at SEMA um, this year. So he has that same body style. But in certain parts of the world, I would need to confirm the locations properly. They actually included an all-wheel drive option and they had two engines. One was the 2JZ GE, non-turbo. And the other one was a 1GFE, I think it was. Um, so I think it's also like an inline, inline six engine. Um, I will need to confirm, but they had two separate types of engines and they had the option of rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And in the process of running the all wheel drive, the front subframe of the car changes um, pretty interestingly to make it work. Ugh. 
And in that process of them running it that way, they incorporated some suspension brackets. So this is the strut bracket or suspension bracket for the Altesa Gita. The, the reason that this is kind of bowed like this is so your axle can uh, pass through on each side um, to attach to the wheel. And then on the other end of the axles, they go into the bottom oil pan of the 2JZ, um, which that oil pan then has a, uh, a differential that attaches to it. So those are the parts that I'm waiting for arrival uh, so that I can start getting uh, working on it. So we're cleaning up the GS. Um, it looks like whoever had this car prior to ending uh, where it ended, where I bought it, was living in the car. Cause I mean, these are all like heat things. The car was towed in the winter. So I'm guessing somebody lived there for a while. And you know, I hope they're doing it right now. Working with a three-year-old, she wanted to help and I denied her that ability. So she's mad at me now, so. You wanna help me? You wanna help me? All right. Closed or my mine are and they're in pretty decent condition. Some of these things, rubber need some love. So you can see this one is kind of damaged. So I'm not sure if they broke into the car one time to get the door open. There's a lot of dirt and dust. So there's gonna be some cleanup for sure. Yeah, but that one's pretty clean. I'll leave that there. I think it's one of the buttons for the seat. Oh, that door over there. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty clean. Like I said, they smoked, so you could tell that there's a lot of cigarette butts everywhere. But for the most part, everything's good. I haven't necessarily checked the sunroof and see how it works, but I'm assuming it works really well. So the goal with the GS in regards of like upgrades performance wise, um, it will be mainly the engine uh, They will be rebuilt. So I'm still not sure if I'm going to be using any of the three UZs that I have here or 2J that I have there or any of the two J's that are in the cars right now, build one of them and then put it on the car. I just want a very decent fun car. So probably 400, 500 horsepower, probably something like that to the wheel, maybe uh, something that will be fun and nice to drive, manual transmission, um, but I wanted to add the all-wheel drive feature. Now, um, driving different newer cars, um, there are cars where you can engage the all-wheel drive just by a button. Um, so if you look at like a Chevy Traverse of like a 2019, it has a button where you can be driving front-wheel drive or just not all-wheel drive in this case. And then when you press it while you're still driving, it will engage the all-wheel drive uh, function. Um, so like for example, my Suburban here, um, to engage all-wheel drive, there's several options. You have auto, right? Where it automatically regulates if it's gonna engage all-wheel drive or not. And most of the time you're driving on rear-wheel rear, rear drive. 
so that's an option you can kind of use that dial that it has. Um, or if you engage it on all wheel drive all the time, you need to park the car and then turn the dial to all wheel drive and let it engage. And once it completes, it lets you know, and then you can start driving. I feel like I like the feature of being able to press a button and engage all wheel drive and then press it again and turn it off. So then it's all just rear wheel drive. Um, but, uh, it may be that feature that the Traverse has, for example, it may be easier to work or may it work because that Traverse is running when the, when it's not a wheel drive is running on front wheel drive, not rear wheel drive. And because you're running a lot of that off of the diff of the, uh, off of the transmission, um, um, I'm, I'm guessing that maybe using the Suburban might be an easier feature where I can maybe have a dial. It won't be so automatic. I would need to park the car um, to change it, but I need to find a way. I'm trying to see if I can find a way that it will, that it will work in that manner or in that fashion, um, not only for gas consumption and things like that, but just for the fun of it, being able to say, hey, I have an all-wheel drive vehicle that I can turn off and make it just rear-wheel drive when I want to do burnouts or donuts. And even though you can do them in an all-wheel drive car, it's nice to be able to switch it off, I think. So that's something that I'm trying to figure out on top of figuring out the proper hatch. Like I said, I want a hatch that allows me to open the rear window, uh, similar to like my, my Suburban does, so I don't have to open the whole hatch every time I want to get something loaded in. I can just open the back window and load it. So then there's a lot of electronics that goes into that, so I can maybe unlock the rear hatch with the press of a button and things like that. So I'm trying to make it seem as if once the car is completely done, that a lot of the features feel OEM in regards of like, oh, this is how maybe Toyota would have built it, you know, things like that. So those are the reasons why it's taking a little longer just to figuring out um, in regards to the hatch this is going to take some some shaping of the rear hatch. I'm thinking of a E39 5 Series hatch just because that hatch, the back window opens. But I'm looking for a more round car since the GS is a really round car. So it's going to take some time to figure out what hatch works the best um, for this. But in regards of getting the all-wheel drive feature, um, that's going to be a lot easier just because a lot of that is OEM made um, to be able to make the car uh, all-wheel drive. And if there is, in, if, if I can't find a feature or, or a way to incorporate turning the all-wheel drive on and off on command, um, then I'm just going to keep it all-wheel drive. No problem. Similar to like an Evo or a uh, STI WRX. So um, I'm just trying to see if I can incorporate it. It would be kind of nice to have that. But if not, then it's just going to remain all-wheel drive. Um, and then for the car itself, in regards of like things that will be, will be refreshing, um, suspension is going to just be refreshed. The body of the car is not going to get a wide body. It's just going to stay stock body. Um, so it's just going to get a wide body. Uh, it's not going to get a wide body. I'm sorry. It's just going to stay stock. All the suspension pieces are all going to be replaced. Most likely some pieces are going to remain OEM and other ones are going to be changed like certain um, suspension parts like control arms and things like that just to provide me a more adjustability. But again, I'm looking to keep the car as, as OEM under the body in regards to suspension and everything geometry wise, pretty much stock as possible. And then things where I need more adjustability change. The interior is going to remain black. I'm going to run black seats. Um, not sure if I'm going to switch to like bucket seats or just improved seats, kind of like a, a, a recar reclinable seat, something like that. I'm not sure yet. Still debating on how much I'm going to spend on the interior and suspension of the car. Um, I'm looking to run some one piece wheels, um, just kind of like a nice one piece wheel, maybe some concave in, in, in them, um, some sticky tires for driving in on the summer. Um, but for the most part, I'm trying to keep the body, keep everything as OEM as possible. So the car is going to look pretty, 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 pretty simple in regards of the exterior. Um, probably may have just kind of like a TRD style lip in the front and that's pretty much it. Nothing necessarily too crazy. Just want to keep it as as uh, as simple as possible. So just expect that uh, I'm going to get back to making more videos regularly. 
So this is the first video of getting back to, uh, you know, kind of the regular programming of the channel. So thank you for your patience and, um, you know, um, still supporting the channel, the site, everything. Um, and um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep adding more, more updates. But as I said, that's just a uh, part of some of the parts that I've been getting. So waiting for the rest as well as uh, figuring out the other things. So please like and subscribe, share. Um, I'll keep adding more content, not only through the YouTube channel, but also through the Instagram. So just uh, keep an eye on that. So thank you again, like and subscribe, share, and uh, uh, hit the notification bell so you can kind of stay on, on top of anytime there's a new video that comes out. Thank you and have a nice day.